There are literally dozens of different keyboard layouts that exist. Some of them are for different languages. Some of them offer different advantages for you if you type in English and want to try something other than the default QWERTY layout. Recently, I decided I was going to try something different, and, and there are a few reasons why. Part of it is that I just like trying new things. Another reason is that I type a lot. For my main job, I end up writing between five and 6,000 words a day. And as you might suspect, that can cause some problems with my hands and fingers and wrists and all that kind of stuff. So I decided I was going to try something new. And I did my research and found that Colmac is one of the easiest keyboard layouts for a QWERTY user to transition to simply because it doesn't change a ton of stuff on the keyboard in terms of layout. Whereas some of the other keyboard layouts are radically different and really do have a very steep learning curve, Colmac is very much close to QWERTY. It just moves a few keys around. So I did it. I think it was last Tuesday-ish that I switched and the initial thoughts I had was that it was really, really hard. I mean, obviously the only keyboard layout that I've ever typed with is QWERTY. So moving to something that looks like this was a serious challenge. And I'll admit that I was at about five words per minute when I started. That first night that I was just getting started with this, I was seriously struggling and seriously rethinking my plan of sticking with it for 30 days. That was my original goal was to stick with it for 30 days. And I switched on this computer. I switched it on the laptop behind me. I switched it on my phone and I was going all in and I have some thoughts. So just for a minute, let's take a look at this. If you notice, like I said, there are a few things that stay the same from QWERTY. Q and W stay in the same place. A, Z, X, C, and V all stay in the same place. Same with B, same with M. And same with the punctuation for the most part. Uh, the colon and the semicolon move up a level. Uh, that's the only punctuation mark that actually changes. So actually getting used to it after a day in terms of actually learning where things were wasn't too bad. The one letter that actually gave me the most problems was the letter E because the letter E moves all the way from over here to over here and it means it's on a completely different hand. And I had some serious problems getting started and learning that the E was being typed with my right hand instead of my left hand. Uh, I ve did eventually kind of figure it out, but I was still making mistakes by the time I stopped. And even though I was doing typing tests for, for 40 minutes to an hour a day, I was still very slow. By the time I decided I was switching back to QWERTY, spoiler alert, uh, I was at about 25 words per minute. And I was actually quite happy with that. I know that if I'd stuck with it, for the three days that I thought I was going to be able to do so, I probably would have been able to get my typing speed up to 60 or 70 words per minute. And that's not bad. It's not as fast as I am with QWERTY, which I can do between 100 and 120. 60 to 70 words per minute would have still been very respectable, and I wouldn't have felt so slow. It would have been fine. So you're probably asking, Matt, why did you only give it five days? If you were thought you could actually make the transition and eventually type fast, why'd you stop? And the answer to that question is key bindings. So everybody who knows me knows I'm a huge tiling window manager fan. That's what I use as my daily driver. Uh, most of the time I spend my time in DWM, but I also switch back and forth between all the other ones. I, I enjoy doing that. I made a video recently about that very topic. And with tiling window managers, your primary means of navigation is with your keyboard. Now you can use a mouse if you wanted to, if you're a evil person, I guess, uh, but you're meant to be using your keyboard. And that means you have key bindings for pretty much everything. And I have my key bindings set to the exact way I want them to be set. I have them in the exact positions. And I don't really think about the letters that I'm touching when I open up Rofi or I open up a browser or whatever. I have kind of the, the, me the muscle memory of where that key binding is, and I just press it. I don't really think that Super W is to open up Firefox. I just press that key button. The problem is, 
that when I switched to Colmac, all those key bindings went all over the place. And I had to start thinking that uh, Super D is Rofi, but D is not no longer in the same place. The S or the the S is in that spot now. And the D moved two places over, so I was constantly pressing Super S in order to get to Rofi. And it was messing with my brain. So the the entirely window manager key bindings was a serious impediment to me actually doing this. Even though I went through and I spent time in DWM's config and ch changed a whole bunch of stuff in order to try to make it a little bit better, it still was not a great experience. And again, I probably could have gotten used to it eventually. It would have messed with my brain every time I had to go use a, a computer that still used QWERTY and had my old configs on it, and I do that often. Not just that computer behind me, but I have another laptop that I take you know elsewhere, and that w would end up staying QWERTY and would have my old configs on it, and the key bindings would still be the same as they used to be, and it would mess everything up. So, but I probably could have gotten used to it. The real problem was Vim, and uh, Vim is always going to be a problem child for me because I constantly feel like I don't know enough about Vim, so I'm always learning new stuff. But the problem is with Vim is not that you can't remap stuff, but if you do remap stuff, it becomes such a pain in the ass to use elsewhere. And more than that, you've with Vim, you're very much trained to use it in a certain way. And you're very much trained to use certain key bindings to function inside of Vim. So, for example, using I to get into insert mode. That's how you get into insert mode. Now, I understand those Vim pe people out there are going to be telling me that there are other ways to get into insert mode. And they're right. You can use A. You can use several other letters. And actually, to get into insert mode in certain positions on a line, it's possible. But for the most part, if you're going to get into insert mode, you're going to press I. Now, let's go back to the Colmac layout. Notice something different there, did you? HJKL, not in the same place anymore. Okay. And to replace with... And H, N, E, and I. And when I actually went through and remapped things, I just used N, E, I, and O, which is technically J, K, L, and semicolon, which are the places where your four fingers are supposed to rest on your keyboard. The point is, I is now there. And I remapped it so that it could be part of the, the navigation cluster. So trying to get into insert mode was a pain in the tuchus. And I understand I could have remapped it. But I w insert mode wasn't the only thing that changed, right? Every other key binding that I would normally use, like navigating between splits, navigating between nerd tree and auto nerd tree, all that stuff ha is associated with the key binding. And they would all had have been changed. And frankly, I just wasn't, it wasn't worth it. Uh, despite the fact that I think I eventually I could have maybe even eventually got up to a you know a respectable word count per minute you know typing and even if it did help with you know RSI injuries and all that stuff changing in Vim just wasn't worth it especially considering the fact that again I would have to eventually use Vim in its normal form or using my old config files that are meant for basically standard Vim usage on other machines. And that would just mess with my mind if I had to keep going back and forth. It just was not going to be something that I was going to enjoy. So uh, after five days, I switched back to QWERTY. Now, uh, just a quick note, you'd think that after five days, my switch back to QWERTY would be a, a problem because I'd still be thinking, you know, in the Colmac state of mind. And the, f the first test I took back in QWERTY on monkeytype.com uh, was a mess. I mean, I got like five words per minute. It was maybe 10 per, 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 words per minute. It was, it was really bad. I was like, oh my God, no, I, I was freaking, I was like, oh my God, I, I ruined my typing speed and my productivity on QWERTY just by going away from it for five days. But it was okay. After three tests, I was back up to 70 words per minute. And after a day, I was back right up to 100 words per minute. So uh, it wasn't a huge deal. So if you do end up ever deciding to switch, just know that your QWERTY ability is not going to go away. Uh, thank goodness, you, but you will need to, you know, test it a little bit and get back to, you know, the s speed of things that you were before you switched. So, in the comments below, let me know if you've ever switched to a different keyboard layout. I would really like to hear from those of you who have successfully done this. 
and how it really affects you in terms of key bindings and stuff like that because that's really where this has failed for me because it, it's just not something that would be all that easy for me to do in terms of getting a hang of it again, especially in Vim. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. And if you do follow me on Twitter, just know that I do tweet about my ex- adventures and trying new things a lot. So you definitely should give me a follow over there. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon Chris, Marcus Meglin, Donnie Sven, East Coast Web, Kell of Devils, Mitchell, Mr. Fox, Arch Center, YouTube, Merrick, and Camp. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.